And in that same verse when he's talking, he also says, not that I've already attained this, but this is our goal, to live what we believe. How are we going to impress? You all can have your seats. How, how are we going to impress on the world and change the world if we never live what we believe? Amen. The world already looks at us as Christians, as talkers. Yeah. You're just talking a bunch of game. When you walk into the, to the office or whatever, they say, oh, they go that Christian. Talk a good game. But I ain't never seen much of them. And the version that I'm reading is the uh, Holman Christian Standard Bible. It says, in any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. So whatever understanding that you have come into, you need to live up to that. Now, that takes courage. Yes, it does. Takes courage. If you look down through the Bible, all through the history of the Bible, God has always used men with courage and encouraged men to be of good courage. Because it takes courage. you got the whole world against you. You got the whole world against you. Listen, God desires human beings to achieve happiness by living a life that is in line with the essence of who He is. This is a, this is this is one of the things. This is where we start to stumble at, because we have we, we we get this feeling when we come into church, we get overcome with emotion, and the pastor comes says, "Hey, listen, you want to give your life to the Lord?" And you run up and you give your life to the Lord, and you all fired up for the Lord for the first couple of months. Start making changes. Well, I ain't going to say this no more. I ain't going to go here no more. I ain't going to watch this no more. I ain't going to do this anymore. You start making all of these radical changes for the first three months. And then slowly but surely, you start to seep back into those same things, those same habits. You do that. You seep back into those same habits. You know why it is? It's because you're trying to live a spiritual experience through your flesh. You're trying to live spiritually through your flesh. God never called you to live by your flesh. Once you gave your life to Christ, he asked you of a spiritual thing. He asked for your spirit to be born, to be fed. And you're placating your, your spirit with a bunch of fleshly things. You're making it look good. Again, you're running around masquerading. You say all of the right things. And you 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 you, you carry your Bible out, open, out in the open. Jesus Christ addressed the, 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 the Pharisees. He said, listen, you all lived in your, 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 your dresses and, and, and increased the size of the phylacteries on your head. But then he turned to his disciples and said, listen, man, don't even pay attention to nothing the dudes do. They're doing it for show. So I'm asking you today, are you finished with the show? Are you finished with the show? Because, because the Lord Jesus Christ addressed it in John, John uh, 4, 24. He said, listen, the time is, it is coming and it's now, as a matter of fact. Yeah. When the Father is seeking for someone yes. to worship him. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in... How you still... How you worshiping God and you still attached to the flesh? Yeah. If that's the case, then you just like the boys in the Old Testament when they were offering up strange fire. You offering God, you're offering God something that He has no use for. God has no use for your flesh. As a matter of fact, you should have no use for your flesh. You're dying. Amen. The older you get, the closer to death you are. The, the, the closer to death you are. This thing is fading. For the women, you put on a couple of pounds. For the men, we get a little good. It's dying. Why are you investing so much time into something that's dying? That's foolish. If I know you're going to run off with my money, if you propose, uh, if you give me a proposal for an investment and I know you're going to run off with my money, why would I give you my money? I'm telling you, your flesh is running off with your money. Your flesh is running off with your life. While you're dying slowly, you're investing in something that is dying. Listen, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy, not just H-O-L-Y, but holy, W-H-O-L-E, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, let's turn it in, turn it to uh, Romans 12, because I want, you, you, when, you, when, you, when it comes to studying the word, the words in the Bible aren't there for no reason, each word means something, it's not vain, it's not there in vain. 
So sometimes you got to take your time. Everybody got it? Romans 12, 1. This is the Apostle Paul uh, uh, speaking. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, I strongly urge you with every bit of mercy that God has that you, not God, not Jesus, not the Apostle Paul, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices. So wait a minute now. If he says that I'm supposed to present my body, then that means I have a role to play in my own spirituality. Why are you sitting back waiting on God to do something that he's already given you the, the, the strength and his spirit to accomplish? 